Hi, I'm Tim Gallagher, Natural Resources Manager for Metro Parks Toledo. We're here this morning to talk about three commonly used tools to plant bare root seedlings. The sharpshooter shovel, the dibble bar, and the hoe dad. These tools are used by thousands of tree planters across the country. And there's small variations for each one of these tools. So we're just going to talk about how to achieve a good, well-planted ceiling. First, the ceiling has to be straight. It has to be tight. The root collar has to be at the right depth, and the, and the root system has to be planted properly and straight. Any deviation from that just causes unnecessary energy for the tree to correct itself and could result, depending on how severely it's tilted, a very poorly formed tree. Second, we want to make sure that the root system is, has good soil contact um, with no air gaps. Third, we want to make sure that root collar is at the top of the soil. We don't want to have a tree seedling that's planted too high and then the soil's piled up against it. That can erode over time through rain and wind and expose that root collar. We want to make sure the root system is straight and not J-rooted in the, in the hole. The last part of that is making sure that we have a proper uh, tool that has the proper depth to get the, the hole deep enough. If the root system doesn't match the tool, sometimes we can, we can shoot them up to about 25 percent of the root system or up to, up to maybe a third of the root system can be trimmed off, pruned off. So this is a sharpshooter shovel. This is primarily used in the western states. It's best used in, in light organic soils. It's a tool that can be easily handled all day in mountainous terrain. Um, it's easy to maneuver and get around. The, the benefits of this shovel, again it's light. Um, generally speaking, the, the blade length, length is ample for, for getting uh, a proper depth for planting a seedling. And it also is very straight for digging a nice straight head wall to plant that straight seedling against. The, the cons to this shovel is it's, it's generally not used in heavy clay soils. Um, the blade is generally thin um, and won't hold up to a lot of pressure exerted against the blade. Another kind of the sharpshooter shovel is actually being able to uh, prepare the site for tree planting. So in mountainous areas um, you can do this because you have a little bit of a height advantage to be able to scrape debris away um, in front of you. You have some nice leverage. In flat ground um, it's a little more difficult. In this situation we don't have uh, a lot of debris to slide away but um, if you have other roots and debris that require a lot, a lot of leverage, this is a very difficult uh, tool to use in flat, heavy soils. And the last thing is uh, it can be very difficult to close the hole in heavy soils with a sharpshooter shovel, just to, due to getting enough leverage with that thin blade. So first we're gonna demonstrate on how to plant a, a, a good seedling with a sharpshooter shovel. First we wanna establish a nice deep hole we can do that in soils that are loose enough and organic enough uh, and light in order to do this. So generally speaking, we don't stomp this shovel into the ground. We actually uh, we'll, we'll force it in by our hands. Push back on it. Don't pull, just push back. Create that nice straight, straight head wall. The seedling can go down in and use your shovel to kind of make sure all the root system's in there nice and straight. Pull the roots collar back up to the top of the hole and then close the hole. Give it a nice good stomp, nice straight seedling. So this is a dibble bar, um, probably one of the more common planting tools, um, generally speaking uh, most commonly used by, by amateurs or volunteers. The benefit to a, to a dibble bar is it's a very easy tool to teach someone how to use. It doesn't take a lot of skill and practice, it's fairly straightforward. It does create a nice straight head wall if used properly. Some of the drawbacks, there's a dibble bar, generally speaking is a very heavy tool. It has to be stomped into the ground. The person that's smaller of stature, it's a little more difficult to actually get this blade into the ground. Another one of the drawbacks to the dibble bar is trying to um, 
manipulate your, your planting site and improve your planting site if you have sod or debris. Um, you'd have to get down very low, push the debris away uh, in that site. Um, if you have sod that you're trying to plant through, you're not going to be able to strip that sod away very easily. Okay, we're going to plant a seedling with the, the dibble bar. Force it all the way into the ground. Push the tool forward. Take it out. Take your uh, tool and force the root system in. Pull the seedling up to the root collar. Generally speaking, this is used in heavy soil, so I'm going to show you how to do this. Plunge the tool in, close the bottom of the hole, and then push the seedling tight. Repeat the process, close the bottom of the hole. Give it a nice good stomp. If you plant the seedling and you rock the dibble bar back and forth, what you're going to do is create an hourglass hole in the bottom that you'll need to close up from both sides. So you need to close the hole here and then go to the other side and repeat the process to close the hole there. So when you're planting the seedling, you wanna make sure that you push your dibble bar forward and don't pull and rock it back and forth. That'll just create undue work. The last of the three tools we're going to talk about is the hoedad. Um, probably the most common planting tool in the eastern United States. Um, there's a couple of variations to the hoedad. Um, the collar can be 110 degrees or a 90 degree uh, angle on it. You can see how this one is slightly angled to 110 degrees. Um, the, the 90 degree angle is best to use in more uh, hilly terrain uh, to get a nice straight head wall. In the, in the more flat, flat ground, the 110 uh, degree angle is preferred. Also, the hoedads come with an aluminum collar or a brass collar like seen here. In heavier soils, um, you would want to use a brass collar would uh, allow for a lot less uh, energy to exert this in, into the ground. The pros to this is this sharp backside that can be used as a tool to modify your tree planting site, your micro site. Uh, stripping back sod, branches, roots. Uh, I'll demonstrate right here how to, how to do this. It allows for a, a nice straight head wall when used properly and has a, a sufficient blade to get a nice deep seedling. So the cons to using the hoedad is um, this is very difficult for volunteers to pick up and use that don't have a lot of experience using this. Um, it's also uh, kind of difficult to use it if you have to throw the hoedad into the ground uh, more than one time to form a hole. Okay, we're going to talk about how to plant a good seedling with a hoedad. Depending on the soils, you can either swing this with one hand, which is actually um, is, is somewhat how it's designed with a curved handle. So you can retrieve a tree seedling at the same time that you're uh, digging the hole with the hoe dad. A heavier soils, it's probably gonna require an overhand swing. Um, in both instances, you're gonna wanna let go of the tool just before it enters into the ground. You don't wanna hang onto this tool all the way in. Uh, number one, it's kinda shocking to your arms and your hands. And two, you want to get a nice straight head wall, and it's very difficult to do if you're hanging onto that tool all the way into the ground. So first we'll demonstrate a two-handed swing for the hoe dad. So we have a nice straight entry. What we're going to do is lift up on the tool to create a hole. Um, we're not going to rock this back and forth. Um, that's a common mistake that, that people make, which creates that hourglass um, hole in, under the underground. We actually want to, this is the way it's designed to walk forward, bust the hole loose, and pull the soil back. Tree goes in, pull it back up to the root collar, pack the soil in, stomp it tight. The lastly, when used improperly, um, is, is, can result in, in, in uh, injuries from the backside. Um, so many times we see uh, 
individuals use this, they throw it in the ground, they don't get it deep enough, and they end up stomping on the blade. That can result in, if you, you would glance off the side, a deep cut in your foot. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found the video informative and helpful. Hope to see you out in the woods soon.